Good evening, and thank you for joining us for this prayer service to remember the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. I am Jennifer Krizak, the Director of Strategic Planning for the Franciscan Peace Center, a ministry of the Sisters of St. Francis, Clinton, Iowa. This prayer service has been organized by the Franciscan Peace Center, a ministry of the Sisters of St. Francis, Clinton, Iowa, and co-sponsored by 14 congregations of women religious. The charisms, corporate stands, and ministries of these congregations are dedicated to promoting the value of all life and peace. We thank each of these congregations for their participation in and support of this prayer service. Our speakers this evening represent our co-sponsoring congregations. Sister Mary Elizabeth Miller is a member of the Sister, Sisters of Charity of Nazareth Western Province. Sister Louise Lairs is a Sister of Charity of Cincinnati. Sister Rebecca Trujillo is a Sister of Notre Dame de, de Namur, Ohio Province. Joanne Snodgrass is an associate of the Sisters of St. Francis, Clinton, Iowa. Sister Rose Marie Tresp is a Sister of Mercy. Sister Ruthie Westmoreland is a Sister of St. Francis, Clinton, Iowa. We are grateful that they are present with us and will lead us in prayer. Our prayer service will be recorded and the recording will be shared with those who have registered as well as posted on our website. Today marks the 79th anniversary of when the United States dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima, Japan. Three days from now will mark the anniversary of the bombing of Nagasaki, Japan. As we gather today, let us call to mind the horrors of the violence inflicted on the people of Japan as well as all those affected by nuclear testing. Our prayer today will draw on the words of scripture, prayers created by members of Pax Christi USA and the Franciscan Peace Center, as well as the writings of Pope Francis and Archbishop John C. Wester, as they urge us to take action for nuclear disarmament and lead us to lives of, and to lead lives of nonviolence. The images included are of the nation of Japan its landscape, villages, and cities. It is our hope that our reflection on these words and images will lead us to a deeper commitment to nuclear disarmament and action for peace and nonviolence. Let us join together in prayer. God of peace, we come to you to express our continuing grief over the horrific bombings and the loss of life inflicted by our country on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. Each life holds value in your eyes and we mourn the loss of lives taken by nuclear weapons. Haunted by the memory of the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we come before you acknowledging our complicity in systems of war and violence, and pray that we may find paths forward to advocate for nuclear disarmament and the healing of all communities that continue to be affected by nuclear weapons. Help us to encourage our country to be one of peace, one that is known for its ability to bring peace to all people living within its boundaries as well as to the rest of the world. God of peace, enable us to find ways to move from grief to action, to embrace the light of peace and nonviolence in our daily lives and in our responsibility as citizens and members of our global community. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Therefore, justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We wait for light, and lo, there is darkness, and for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope like the blind along a wall, 
groping like those who have no eyes. We stumble at noon as in the twilight, among the vigorous as though we were dead. We all growl like bears, like doves we moan mournfully. We wait for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions before you are many, and our sins testify against us. Our transgressions indeed are with us, and we know our iniquities, transgressing and denying the Lord and turning away from following our God, talking oppression and revolt, conceiving lying words and uttering them from the heart. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands at a distance. For truth stumbles in the public square, and uprightness cannot enter. Truth is lacking, and whoever turns from evil is despoiled. The Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one, and was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm brought him victory, and his righteousness upheld him. As Pope Francis said in his June 2022 message, to the first meeting of states parties to the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Nuclear weapons are a costly and dangerous liability. They represent a risk multiplier that provides only an illusion of a piece of sorts. Here I wish to reaffirm that the use of nuclear weapons as well as their mere possession, is immoral. Trying to defend and ensure stability and peace through a false sense of security is the balance of terror, sustained by a mentality of fear and mistrust, inevitably ends up poisoning relationships between peoples and obstructing any possible form of real dialogue. Possession leads easily to threats of their use, becoming a sort of blackmail that should be repugnant to the conscience of humanity. A, re a reading from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still 
and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. A reading from the Gospel of John. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This is a reading from Archbishop John C. Wester's pastoral letter, Living in the Light of Christ's Peace, A Conversation Toward Nuclear Disarmament. In Archbishop Wester's diocese in New Mexico is located Los Alamos, the major site of production of nuclear weapons. Jesus came into the world as the true light he came to lead us out of the darkness of violence, death, and destruction. In doing so, he is the light of the world. His light is the, is the true light of universal love, the light of universal compassion, the light of universal peace. His light is the light of total nonviolence. His light of peace enables us to see a way forward on the path of life toward a new future of peace, a world without nuclear weapons. As his followers, we choose not to live in the darkness of violence and in the shadow of the threat of nuclear war anymore. The light of Christ's peace is leading us out of the valley of the shadow of death, where we have wandered far too long, building and developing thousands of nuclear weapons in preparation for nuclear war. In the light of Christ's peace, we can see a new promised land of peace, love, and nonviolence. If we dare follow the transfigured, risen Christ, we can put aside our fears, rise, and walk toward for, forward into that promised land of peace and into a new world without nuclear weapons, starting right here in New Mexico. In the light of Christ's peace, we see one another as brothers and sisters. God did not create us to be enemies of each other, but rather as members of one human family, all God's children, sharing this beautiful common home. We need not threaten anyone, anywhere, any longer, with nuclear warfare. We may, may, must take concrete steps to begin the process of nuclear disarmament, to dismantle our weapons, to clean up our land, and to spend those enormous resources on structures of international, nonviolent conflict resolution. These steps can end the causes of warfare itself, such as hunger, poverty, 
racism, and greed.
petitions are taken from Pax Christi, USA, Novena. Remembering our role in the structural sins of our nation and our call to live the light of Christ's peace, we bring our prayers to God. Our response is, God of peace, teach us your ways of nonviolence. We pray for the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki as they continue to bear the wounds of nuclear warfare. May they know healing and peace. May we say never again to the use of nuclear weapons. We pray, God of peace, Teach us your ways of nonviolence. We pray for the people of the Pacific Islands and atolls who suffered and continue to suffer from radiation related illnesses, birth defects, and environmental destruction as a direct result of nuclear testing, we pray. God of peace, teach us your ways of nonviolence. We pray for solidarity with all indigenous peoples impacted by uranium mining, atomic bomb testing, and the long-term storage of nuclear waste on their sacred lands. May we work toward real solutions to rectify these many wrongs done to our siblings. We pray, God of peace, teach us your ways of nonviolence. We pray for the people impacted by nuclear weapons research, development, testing, and use here in the United States and around the world. May we understand the real human, financial, and environmental costs of developing, maintaining, and expanding nuclear arsenals even as many continue to suffer from a lack of basic human needs, such as food, clothing, housing, education, and health care. We pray, God of peace, teach us your ways of nonviolence. We pray for the determination never again to use atomic energy as weapons of war. May we heed Pope Francis' call for prayer and commitment to a world completely free of nuclear weapons. We pray, God of peace, Teach us your ways of nonviolence. We pray for the wisdom to understand fully the devastating consequences of using nuclear weapons and for the fortitude never to justify their use again. We pray. God of peace, teach us your ways of nonviolence. We pray for all who are involved in conflicts and war around the globe, especially the people of Ukraine, Russia, Sudan, Gaza, and Israel. 
may all forms of aggression cease and may every nation renew efforts to reestablish lasting peace. We pray, God of peace, teach us your ways of nonviolence. We pray for forgiveness, especially for those times when we have opted for violence instead of reconciliation. May we follow God's way of encounter and dialogue for the resolution of all conflicts. As stated by Archbishop Wester of Santa Fe, all our conversations should be respectful, rooted in prayer, based in nonviolence, and centered in the hope and belief that nuclear disarmament is achievable. We can do this, and with the gift of God of peace with us, we can do this soon. We pray. God of peace, teach us your ways of nonviolence. Closing prayer, used with permission from Pax Christi, USA. Good and gracious God, we pray for a world free of nuclear weapons. Lift the fog of atomic darkness that hovers so pervasively over the earth. We pray for world leaders to come to the realization that more weapons and war do not bring peace. May financial resources be allocated to alleviate poverty, support food security, housing, health care, environment and educational programs. Good and gracious God, we pray that the deadly power of nuclear weapons never again be unleashed on people in your creation. May such weapons of mass and indiscriminate annihilations be forever banned and eliminated from the face of the earth. Good and gracious God, forgive our past silence. Give us the courage and strength to tirelessly raise our prophetic voices, to work to eliminate weapons of mass destruction. Let us remember Hiroshima and Nagasaki as beacons as we commit ourselves to find ways to live together in peace, that we may not be just peace lovers, but peacemakers. In the words of Isaiah, it shall come to pass that the peoples shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And so we pray for the time when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Amen, so be it.
I want to thank you all again for joining us for this prayer service this evening in remembrance of the bondings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. I pray that these words and these images do lead us to deeper contemplation and action for nuclear disarmament. We especially thank our speakers this evening who have led us in prayer and also our co-sponsoring congregations who have supported this prayer service. I personally would also like to thank my colleagues, Laura Anderson and Amanda Eberhardt for their assistance with technology this evening. Everyone who has registered for this prayer service will receive a recording of it. It will also be posted on our website at clintonfranciscans.com. Additionally, the Franciscan Peace Center has created a nuclear disarmament resource guide. This guide includes additional readings, recent videos and webinar, webinar recordings, an interactive nuclear weapons quiz, organizations working on nuclear disarmament, actions you can take, and links to stories of the victims of the bombings on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, as well as the victims of nuclear testing. We will send this to, to all registrants with the recording of the prayer service. It is our hope that these resources will continue to re inspire our commitment to nuclear disarmament. Thank you again for participating in this prayer service and praying with us for a future free of nuclear weapons. <laughs>